now that we got the material basics, let's go back. I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to open up our core we were working on. And let's go ahead and just texture material this thing. So I'm going to keep it simple. I'm just going to do red, and let's look at some of these. So one of the differences between matte caps and basic materials, let's talk about that first. So if I go, you know, let's move this back to white. So right now, everything has matte cap gray assigned to it. So if I go over here, I'm going to close all these menus out. I'm going to grab light, throw it over here. So if I move this light around, you're going to see it's not really affecting the object. However, if I move the light, and I'm just clicking and dragging on this red dot. So we have one light selected, and we're just moving this dot around. It doesn't seem to be doing much in the viewport. However, if I hit BPR render, what that's going to do is a best preview render. Now, like I mentioned before, you're going to see the shadow kind of goes over here and just gets clipped off. That's because the floor plane stops there. Go really quickly over here to your draw. And let's just do a grid size. Let's crank that up. And now when we do a BPR render, it'll render fine. And let's go ahead and turn perspective on as well. There we go. So you can change the intensity of your light. But it, again, it doesn't seem to be affecting that matte cap. And that's because matte cap is captured material lighting. So this little shader ball here is telling this object in real time how to behave because the lighting is kind of baked in. If you do a basic material and then you move this light around, you're going to see this is lighting that basic material in real time. So with matte cap selected, let's go back to matte cap gray, um, I can change where the shadow goes. If I move the light over here to the right and BPR render, the shadow is going to fall over here. If I move it over here to the left and BPR render, the shadow is going to fall over here because the light's projecting from the side. Uh, another really quick thing about lighting, I think, let's tap it. Uh, let's actually, let's go to basic material here. There we go. So now if I, if I just move this around, you're going to see it lights it from this direction and then you can hit BPR and the shadow cast uh, accordingly. However, if you just tap this light once, it's going to send that light around to the back and it's going to do kind of a rim light effect. So now if I BPR render, it's going to be kind of lighting from this back area here and it's not really casting a shadow at all. Uh, so I'm going to tap that once and I'm just going to bring this light around to the front here. So lighting and materials work hand in hand. So if I go over here to the material menu, you're going to see, um, oh man, this is going to be a really short. So there's no material properties to mess with. So that makes it really simple. So you're just going to basically pick and again, you can just hover and roll over any of those materials that are kind of going to look for the look you're going for. Let's do toy plastic. We'll do a really shiny one. Uh, we got toy plastic selected. Let's do a red color. And I'm going to alt tap. So if you alt tap any of these sub tools, it's going to select them. I'm going to alt tap the skin. And we'll take this color menu. And we got MRGB selected on a color. Fill that object with the toy plastic red. And you're going to see when I did that, it went ahead and turned on that little paintbrush for me. So now if I alt tap this middle area here, let's go ahead and just grab basic material. And we'll make it kind of a greenish, yellowish, kind of pulpy kind of look. Uh, now, as I'm moving these colors around, you're going to see all of these objects here are inheriting those properties. That's because they don't have that paintbrush turned on. In fact, if I turn the paintbrush off for the skin, it'll inherit those properties as well. So it doesn't mean I got rid of the poly paint. I just turned off the visibility of the colorize option for that. So if I turn that paintbrush back on, okay, now that's locked in there as shiny red. So we'll go ahead and do the pulp. And we'll do MRGB again, color fill object. Let's go ahead and do basic material too. I'm going to alt tap the worm. And of course we got to make that green and we'll do color fill object. I'm going to alt tap his glasses here. That was his eyeballs here. Let's do his glasses. Now I know the lights aren't going to affect the glasses that much, but that's okay. I'm just, I'm just looking for a dark material here. So I'm going to do matte cap. Uh, we'll do Chrome B. I'll do a dark gray, uh, maybe not that dark. And then we'll do a color fill object. For his eyeballs, I'm going to do a toy plastic. So I'm going to go back to Toy plastic here, choose a white. I'll tap his eyeballs, color fill. And for his eye color part, uh, let's go ahead and just do black. We'll keep toy plastic, we'll do black. So we'll do color fill object. Now if I want to sample his green worm, co worm color, I can hit C and that'll turn it green. And you know what, let's make it a little darker, a little more towards the yellow, or maybe the blue, doesn't really matter. Um, for the leaves, they're not that shiny. Let's try a blend. There we go. We'll do a color fill object and the stem, of course. Oops, that just did his eyeballs here. We'll alt tap the leaf, color fill object. We'll alt tap the stem. We'll of course choose a brown, dark brown. And you know what? That's a that's a that's a fine material. We'll do color fill object. So I got this guy all ready to be rendered. So now if we do a BPR render, 
we can go in here and just kind of render them out. Uh, just a little bit more on the lighting. Again, if I have a light selected and turned on, I can move around the direction of that lighting. So let's say I want a light over here. If I want to change the intensity, I can do that. Let's uh, just type in one there. And now if I touch this light, that light is selected, but it's not turned on yet. So you gotta to touch it one more time. And that's gonna do a bounce light by default of an intensity of 0.3. So now when I render, it just kind of fills in this area just a little bit. And I can keep going in here. And of course you can, uh, you know, this light is just kind of ambient. This light is colored blue and it's providing a little bit of bounce. And now if we BPR render this, you're gonna see a little bit of blue lighting come in on the side. So you, you can set these lights up by yourself if you want to. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to change this intensity to like five just to crank it up. I'm going to tap it once to go back behind and we can just do a really, really bright rim light over here. If you want to make this rim light kind of cool, you can do a cool, cool color. And then if you want to select this one and give it kind of a warm tint to it, you can kind of just warm that color up just a little bit. Now when you render this thing, you'll have a really strong rim light. Now, of course, the shadows are kind of blocking it out, but you can kind of play with your lighting and materials at the same time.